So, quick update. Um, finally got my panel assembled with my 3D printed switch caps. Um, made some horrible mistakes with these, but uh, I was okay with it. They only cost me like a penny a piece, if that. Um, what I ended up doing is the the paint I used were, ended up not agreeing with ABS plastic. First mistake. Uh, painting them out where it was cold and layering the paint on extra thick. Uh, another mistake, so it double ate the plastic. And using duct tape to set them on. And cotton in the backside. Uh, more mistakes. So they they were a nightmare. They I was just about to throw them all away, but uh, I was able to salvage enough to do the panel. Those ones I think I'll just throw out and start over. But uh, yeah, here we are. Um, I changed out all these switches to uh, single pole, double throw. Actually, a couple of them are double pole, double throw because they were out of the other ones. These are just automotive switches. I'm I'm not big on paying the big bucks for the Lear ones when these ones look the part and um, they're center off, so they're an on off on and I'll uh, use the center position to do the ground and in off position I'll use interface IT to make the light off uh, in the off position which would be center I'll tell it in this case it would be just the beacon and then in the on position up here I'll tell it beacon and strobe so using the kind of internal logic so it should work good um, yeah uh, here's my nifty new power supply that I'm just loving and I hooked up to one LED here and we'll roll the current up here real gentle like and we will there we go so that's the light transmission through my 3d printed AML caps it's just perfect uh, a little light on the paint on the around the outside there but um, yeah that is just Perfect. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I see no problems whatsoever. And actually some of those were even worse than these for paint bleed that got on the surface and I couldn't get it off. You can't use a solvent on the plastic. Um, and that's what this paint needed so I ended up just taking a piece of sandpaper. But uh, yeah, uh, I got my 3D printed gear knob on here. Uh, and I'm going to print another one. That's a silly switch I have it on but pretty easy in SketchUp, I just make it fit the switch. But uh, something happened when I did the round corners, it turned it oval, and I didn't even notice before I printed it, but again, uh, not too concerned, it only cost me pennies. So uh, here's the back side before interfacing, and that's what I'm going to start on next. I start hooking up some pigtails, and uh, probably use the Cat5 Ethernet wire again, and yeah. Uh, I've got some other things I 3D printed, and I'll show those next. So, a uh, quick video in here. Uh, a lot has changed. I don't have the sim fired up, but uh, you'll note I finally got around to hooking up the backlight for my electrical panel that Eric Tomlin made. Uh, I believe he still has these available on Hangar 45. Um, I think the light is coming through quite a bit more white on the on the phone camera than what it actually is. Yeah, everything comes through a little bit white and the white balances off. So this is actually quite a bit more, uh, it's pretty much the same color as Vince's panels and the others and the real ear. So uh, pretty happy with that. Just need some rotor or some uh, uh, knobs on there. Uh, my throttle quadrant, I now have my levers uh, attached. What I ended up doing was uh, making a sister block that fits the other axis on the uh, on the SciTech throttle quadrant and glued it to the side so they're they're running on both axes now which makes them very very sturdy there's just a bit more of a gap than what I'd want here because I didn't offset the lever and I kind of should have but whatever uh, plenty good enough plays the part just fine smooth. Uh, the only thing is this thing's still just velcroed down, so I think I'll get around to finally fastening it. Reverse down here, I can actually pull on these to get reverse, which they don't pivot like the real thing, but uh, grand total of cost, probably about 50 cents, if that. Um, 
my spoiler lever on there and flaps for now what I did is I just printed another spoiler lever and stuck it on there uh, because the, there's no way to make that that axis look like the real thing uh, what I did do over here I got a landing gear knob on there now um, but also this panel is entirely interfaced uh, I spent all the afternoon on Sunday uh, wiring it sorry about this I'm going to try and get in one spot here uh, I spent all afternoon wiring it changed all these toggles to three position that needed to be except the emergency lights which isn't interfaced anyway and I ran out of three position toggles so uh, the AMLs are my 3D printed AML caps that I showed uh, I think previous to this it will go in the same video I'm going to scrap them. The paint warped them pretty bad to the point where they're not uh, catching and they're, they're popping off and being a real pain so I'm going to scrap all them. I printed enough off last night to do well basically the whole Learjet. I did. So I did change the AML caps. So I'll have to upload a new file to Thingiverse. Uh, my original design it didn't have quite a big enough cutout. I don't know how I missed it but it wasn't wide enough for the AMLs. They were catching on there just fine, but uh, it wasn't proper, so I redesigned the cap with larger cutouts, and now they fit way better. So, uh, well, not way better, but they clamp right on permanently. Uh, I painted some caps to stick them on there until I have some other ones, and then I have proper AML caps in the other ones. I just don't have front panels for my backers yet. So, uh, yeah, this panel... Um, I did uh, proper FSS, FSX controls for everything that I could and then I programmed some uh, interface IT logic for the items that I couldn't and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it works. Um, still need to tweak a couple of things and come up with some logic but uh, yeah, pretty minor. Uh, I'll get around to it. And uh, next video I'm going to try and, well not use this shaky cell phone camera. Uh, my shakes. Um, I'm going to try and use a, a video camera and capture some of the systems and basically a start up and a flight from start to finish maybe. Um, showing off some of the uh, Jet 45 functionality. I'm just absolutely thrilled with the new Jet 45 build. The more I play with it, the more things I find that, uh, that they fixed. Last night I noticed that uh, they incorporated a uh, warning on the ICAS if you try and deploy flaps and spoilers at the same time. Really, you're not supposed to do that. It does display an ICAS message, and I think it even might give you a master caution or a master warn. Uh, pretty awesome. Just one more level of realism. I'm, I'm super tickled. The only problem I'm having is my, my MFD is crashing. Um, it's an issue I've had since I did the update, and I do suspect that the configuration is incorrect or the file is corrupt. I need to reinstall it. That said, uh, what I did do this weekend, uh, two things. One, turn off automatic update on your computers. Disable that because you get into troubles. I got that sorted out pretty easy, uh, but what I did do up here on the triple head, I tried to get to the 5,000 wide resolution, which these monitors are capable of. The triple head is capable of, but you need to be something less than 60 hertz. Um, I went and messed around with it and got even a third party custom driver. Uh, by the time I was done, I had basically destroyed FSX. It, it, wouldn't, it was just crashing immediately anytime I'd get near the ground. Uh, it would only run for a little while. Did a system back, uh, restore, messed around, reinstalled drivers, rolled everything back to where I was. And then come to find out, somehow in the process of system restore and blah blah blah, I dorked up my PM sounds. So I think that was what was causing my crashes. I disabled that on this computer, the main rig. I still have it running on uh, one of the Jet 45 rigs. I think I finally solved it, but. Uh, yeah, the pains of you try and get a little further ahead and end up wrecking something else that was working stable and something as important as your graphics. I don't know how you can prevent it, but uh, yeah. When it's working well, probably best off to leave it alone. And turned out uh, it works fine at the 
I forget what the resolution is now, around 4,000 wide-ish, maybe 3,800 wide, can't remember. But it, it works fine once you have your zoom level right. So, And once your FS config stops adding a wide view equals false on your FS CFG file, uh, even though you put a, a true at the beginning, found out it doesn't matter where in the display section you put that. So Anyway, that's enough of me talking. This is uh, where I sit. Next video I'm going to try and show off some of the interfacing and some of the logic and how this thing works. I took a flight last night and just, it was great. I'm pretty happy with this. So, thanks for watching.